I want you to imagine with me this uh, scenario. Um, you have invited guests over to your home. And suddenly you realize that one of your guests is doing something that you forgot to do before they arrived. How do you feel? What would be the worst case scenario? What if, what if you saw the guest uh, sweeping your kitchen floor? What if you saw them doing your dishes? Or what if you looked out in the front yard and your guest was out pulling weeds in the front yard? <laughs> or, in my mind, this is the worst case scenario. What if you walked by your restroom and you saw your guest cleaning your toilet? Oh, the embarrassment, right? Uh, we wouldn't ever want that on, on, I wouldn't want that on, to wish that on any of you. It's a, probably a strange guest that would take the uh, initiative to do that as well, so that would be a little awkward in and of itself. But all of this would be, I imagine, very embarrassing. But by imagining this scenario, you have now a better understanding of what the disciples would have felt like in the upper room. But see, the culture of the Middle East at that time dictated that if you hosted a meal, you would have a servant assigned to washing the guests' feet as they arrived. Since guests reclined around a table that was somewhat close to the ground and everyone wore sandals and feet were kind of close to the table, uh, you... Uh, Washing feet was an important measure of hospitality. But at this meal, apparently no servant had been assigned. Maybe by design, Jesus knew what he was doing. But as all these disciples and Jesus reclined around that table, the disciples were all awkwardly waiting to see which one of them would stand up and wash everyone else's feet. Nobody moved. This group of 12 disciples had frequently debated among themselves who was the greatest, and everyone knows that the most important people in a room should not be kept busy doing menial tasks. The most important people in the room have to be ready to make important announcements. They have to be uh, ready to imp answer important questions that may arise. The less important people, they have time to take care of less important things. Perhaps the disciples even joked about who would wash the feet. Hey Thaddeus, you going to wash our feet or what? Simon Peter might have said. <laughs> of course, uh, he wouldn't do it. No one thought he would. But then, the unthinkable happened. Jesus excused himself from the table. That in itself was a bit embarrassing for the disciples because the, Jesus was the guest of honor, the most important person in the room. And the guest of honor does not leave the table except in case of emergency. Instead, the guest of honor should tell somebody, anybody, what he needs, and they'll bring it to him. But Jesus stood up from the table, walked to the corner by the door, removes his outer coat, wraps a towel around his waist, and pours water into a basin while his disciples watch with their mouths gaping open. Jesus walks over to one of his disciples. I think it was probably Judas, given the clues were given in the text, but I don't know for sure. He walks up to one of his disciples, and he washes that disciple's feet. And the next, and the next, and the next, all around the table. And the disciples apparently were silent. That is until Jesus got to the least silent of the disciples. In every group of people, there's always one person you can count on to speak up. And in this case, it was Simon Peter. And Peter 
looks at Jesus and he says, wait, 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 what are you doing? Are you washing my feet? You won't understand it now, Jesus says, but you will understand it later. But as Jesus moves forward to wash Peter's feet, Peter protests even more. No, never, never. I will never let you wash my feet. And it's not that Peter had some sort of phobia or that he thought it was weird for someone else to wash his feet. Today, you might assume that's the case because perhaps for some of you, that's a line that you just don't cross. But Peter, in this culture, this was normal. It was as normal as shaking hands. And Peter had had his feet washed by countless others many times before. The problem was not that his feet were being washed. The problem was who was about to wash his feet. Peter was embarrassed and shocked that Jesus, the Messiah, God in the flesh, would stoop down to wash the dirt off his tired feet feet. Now, if anything, Peter should be washing Jesus' feet. In fact, if Jesus had simply asked, Peter would have jumped up. Oh, of course, Rabbi! Not yours, though. He would have looked at his companions and and winked jokingly, because, of course, none of them expected each other to wash each other's feet. But now the tables have been turned. The master is insisting on washing his disciples' feet. Peter, Jesus says, if I don't wash your feet, then you really don't belong to me. Rabbi, in that case, then don't just wash my feet, wash my hands, wash my head. Uh Uh-uh, Peter, Peter, you've already bathed, only your feet are dirty. Jesus was trying to get the focus back on the main point. Otherwise, Peter might get hung up on the what without understanding the why. The what was that Jesus was washing the disciples' feet. The why? Jesus was about to get to that. After putting away the towel and the water basin and putting his outer garment back on, Jesus sat down and asked his disciples, Do you understand the significance of what I just did for you? You call me teacher, and you call me Lord, and and I am. But if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, then you ought to wash each other's feet. What I just did, Jesus says, was an example for you to follow. See, a servant is not greater than his master. Someone who is sent out on a mission... Jesus says, is not greater than the one who sent him on this, ma- on this mission. You all know this, he says. But you will be blessed if you do what you know you ought to do. In other words, Jesus wanted his disciples to realize that it was not beneath him to wash others' feet. And if that was the case then they also should wash each other's feet. Now often, we use this passage at communion service time or to remind ourselves why we choose to do the foot washing service. And this is quite valid. In fact, three times in this passage, Jesus tells his disciples that they ought to wash each other's feet. And so we do today, and we will today. But it's important that we don't lose sight of why we do this. As I've studied the Bible, I've come to realize that God rarely gives a command without telling us why He's commanding us to do it. Sometimes He tells us right there in the command. Other times He tells us later on in the same passage. Or sometimes He'll give a command, and we have to, but we, as we read the Scripture, we find another place and say, Oh, There's a reason for that command. Way over here, maybe in the New Testament, maybe way before the command was was given. But not always, but often, he tells us why. The why is important. Motivation is often more important than what we actually do. 
In this story, Jesus makes it clear why he is washing feet. It's not just the culture. It's not just so that they will do precisely the same thing. And it's not even so that we, in a church service 2,000 years later, will wash each other's feet at a communion service. That wasn't the point. The point was this. In fact, Jesus, excuse me, John, as he's writing this story, bookends the story with two texts that explain to us why Jesus is washing feet. Here's how it begins. John chapter 13, verse 1, says, Now before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Now, here's the beginning of the chapter. Now, jump down to the end of the chapter, John 13, and we're almost to the end here. Verse 35, 34 to 35, Jesus says, A new command I give to you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another, and by this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. When Jesus washed his disciples' feet, he wanted to show them how much he loved them and how much they ought to love others. Jesus' whole goal in this was to elevate humanity. He saw in us what we could not see. We assumed that because of our sins, we were worthless and hopelessly lost. But Jesus came to show us that no one is worthless. And then he showed us what our ultimate worth was. Not just by becoming one of us, not just by stooping down to wash our feet, but by paying the ransom price for us with his own life. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, Peter wanted us to know from what he learned from Jesus. He wanted us to, to know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Peter goes on to tell us that for this reason Jesus was foreordained before the foundation of the world and was made manifest, appeared, revealed in these last times for you. In other words, and please listen closely, Jesus did not die for us so that we could be worth saving. Jesus died for us because we were worth saving. Do you see the difference between the two? There's a big difference between the two. You were worth saving before you came to Jesus. You were worth saving before you left your old life. Nothing you did, not even the decision you made, made you worth saving. The simple fact that you exist is evidence that you are worth saving. Worth the blood of Jesus Christ, God become human, because you are His child, created in his own image, you are worth everything to him. And the foot washing service is a reminder and an opportunity for us to remind each other of the inestimable value of each human being. And a reminder that no matter who we are, no person has a higher value than another in God's eyes. But the meaning of foot washing goes beyond even this. Jesus was also trying to teach his disciples about the work he had done and would continue to do in their own hearts. Washing their feet was a reminder of the washing he wants to do in my heart and in yours. And unlike any guest you've likely ever hosted, this guest with a capital G is here to clean. Of course, Jesus is a polite house guest. He won't start cleaning up without asking permission first, but 
He might ask to start cleaning up places you'd rather he didn't see. Or he might want to throw away some things you're just not ready for him to throw away. Cleaning out a home that is valuable, some of you have had to go through this process, cleaning, cleaning out a home that is valuable but cluttered takes quite a long time. In fact, keeping any house clean is the work of a lifetime. And even though Jesus is a guest in your heart, he wants to do that work of cleansing for you. Your job is to let the guest clean. And as you let Jesus clean you from the inside out, you will experience joy beyond anything artificial this world can give. You will experience peace that you can't understand. You'll also experience trials, hardship, and pain. But you'll have a friend who will walk through those trials with you and you'll never be alone. Are you letting Jesus into your home as a guest? He's knocking at your door. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 tells us, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Jesus would love to live in your heart today. And at the beginning of a new year, this is a better decision than any New Year's resolution you could ever make. Invite Jesus into your heart. Eat this meal and this meal with Him. Accepting His sacrifice, His blood is redemption for your sins. And accepting the fact that He values you more than you could ever imagine. And He always has. And then... Value others with that same value He has shown you. Serve others with that same quality of service, your best. And love others like Jesus has loved you so that everyone can know that you belong to Him and that they are also valuable beyond their imagination. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is this, to let Jesus into your heart as a guest and let the guest clean and to love people in this world like Jesus loves them.